When I had not yet walked ten years along life's path into this world, I encountered dragons. And lo, though many years have passed, these lumbering beasts walk with me still. So come, adventurer, sit a spell, or tell a tale to keep you well. It is a tale of mirth and woe, told to follow where you go. For no path is as it seems, when thoughts of dragons guide your dreams. I thought it might be time to provide a bit of an introduction to both myself and the channel. Although I've not been uploading videos to YouTube for very long, and thought I'd stayed more or less within my niche, I lost one of my earliest subscribers to my last video. Now I do understand that subscribers will come and go over time, but I also realize that it has not been clear from my upload pattern to this point exactly what type of content I intend to produce for this channel. Each of the videos that I've uploaded thus far has differed in terms of both content and format to some extent. Each video has been for me an opportunity to learn something new about my editing software and or about how YouTube algorithm treats different types of videos. So let's talk a little bit about how I got started with tabletop role-playing games and also about what I plan to do with this channel. I was actually introduced to role-playing games over the Thanksgiving holiday in 1979. My first exposure was actually a version of the board game Risk, where all the players took on the roles of famous historical generals and framed their turn actions in terms of a postulated alternate history. I was only nine years old at the time, so the high school and college age participants did not originally think I would be a suitable player. As a visitor, I was expected to play with the younger brother in the family we were visiting. However, it quickly became apparent that I knew a fair bit about World War II history, and more importantly, they learned that I knew quite a bit more about Temujin, better known as the Chinggis Khan, than anyone else at the table. I was invited to join and play. I didn't win that game of Risk, but I acquitted myself well enough that it was decided I might be able to play Dungeons and Dragons. I was presented with a copy of Men and Magic from the original Dungeons and Dragons box set and told to be ready to play the next day. Since I had read Lord of the Rings for the first time over the summer of 1979, that was my main mental image for understanding the game and how to actually play it. Since I wasn't told that Ranger was an option, I chose to play as an elf and I gave myself the rather unoriginal name of Kelethorn of Lorien. Once back home, I had no access to the original D&D books, so I went to the public library where I found that they had a couple of copies of the basic rules and also a couple copies of hardbound books with the label Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I chose the latter. Unfortunately, one had to be 13 to check out the books, which were part of the adult collection. It would be about two years before I had my own copies of all the core hardbound books. So for much of that time, I did all my reading, planning, and writing at the library and ran the game for my friends with only a copy of the Holmes basic rules that I was able to borrow from a family friend. Because of its widespread availability, AD&D became my primary game system, and it was within that system that I designed my campaign world, upon which I had actually begun working before I even knew about D&D. I originally started working on my campaign world in an effort to emulate Tolkien and make something even more realistic than Middle Earth. I continued to read fantasy books, becoming especially fond of Moorcock's Elric Saga and Zelazny's Chronicles of Amber. I also started reading H.P. Lovecraft around that time. A couple years later, I found Robert Aspirin's Myth series, and those four authors became the cornerstones of how I write for D&D. However, I also had a love for cinematic, uh, fantastical martial arts movies, and also the usually more serious tone of Chambara films. I came to YouTube looking for something other than music in June 2023, but quickly discovered that it 
was a much different beast than I had ever realized as a casual consumer of music content only. I was at that time already considering making videos for distribution on YouTube. However, I do not possess any particular background in videography and wanted to get an idea of what I needed to do to make reasonably watchable videos. I'm still learning. My main reason for wanting to learn to make better videos is to be in a competitive position to secure regular grant funding to make anthropology and archaeology related educational videos on my business channel. However, I chose tabletop role playing games as my niche for this channel because I felt that was an area where I actually had useful thoughts that I could convert into video content. While I do not mean this as a criticism of any other channel's way of making content, one of the things that has made YouTube less than useful for me is that a lot of the content is roughly the equivalent of a student homework project. I do not necessarily dislike grading homework, term papers, tests, etc., but they are not typically content that I can cite in professional contexts. I'm bringing this up for a couple of reasons here. Uh, first and foremost, I will not be choosing content based on what search terms YouTube says are popular at any given time. I will make content that is based on my actual knowledge from personal experiences. That said, it does seem that a lot of my ideas for videos stem directly from seeing other videos on the topic and thinking that I have something completely different to offer in regard to that topic. Uh, secondly, while I will not be choosing topics that I think will bring me abundant views and engagement just for those reasons alone, I would like to monetize the channel if I ever get it to that point. Um, by that I don't mean to pursue paid endorsements, but I do believe that YouTube puts ads on videos anyway if they think they can make a buck off of them. So I also think it makes sense to place ads that can be skipped when able and then roll that small profit back into channel and community development. All that then brings us to the question, what sort of content will I make for upload to this channel? Uh, first and foremost, I want to focus on games that are readily available to current players rather than dwell on games that are out of print with no established clone in the marketplace. Second, I very much like generic rule sets that are expected to be adapted to different settings, genres, etc. Uh, third, whether old or new, I prefer systems that are generally referred to as old school, by which I mean games that emphasize setting over system that emphasize rulings over rules, and that create heroic characters, not super heroic ones. Unless, of course, it actually is a superhero genre game. Uh, lastly, while I'm open to new games, I do not care for games that utilize meta currencies to offset the randomness of die rolls. It is okay for characters to lose or even die during the course of a game. It will probably come as no surprise that I expect the majority of my content to relate directly to the oldest editions of D&D or their near clones. However, I also expect that much of that content will apply both to other editions of D&D as well as to tabletop role-playing games more generally. Aside from D&D's D20 engine, I also like Chaosium's basic role-playing D100 system, West End Games' D6 system, and above all else, the basic chance of success BCS system that Bob Charette and Paul Hume developed for Fantasy Games Unlimited, which in some ways can be viewed as a hybrid of D20 and D100 systems. There are also some new games that I wish to include among my core RPG systems. Uh, for example, the excellent Mouse Ritter game by Isaac Williams, which in turn is based upon Into the Odd by Chris McDowell. And finally, I will probably veer uh, every now and again into tactical wargaming, especially Starfleet Battles and Car Wars. Um, that should be just about all the introductory information at this point about the channel, but feel free to ask any questions in the comments section. I do appreciate all forms of viewer engagement, such as subscribing or clicking on the like button. Um, other than that, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video.